Hi, in this lecture, we are going to show that three sat reduces to subset sum. In other words, we are going to show that if subset sum is in P, if subset sum can be solved efficiently, then also the three sat problem can be solved efficiently and is in P. Let us first define the subset sum problem. Okay, the subset sum um, has as input a list of n numbers, a1, a2, uh, all the way to n, and I target t, and it asks if there is a subset of these numbers which sums to t, okay, which I can write as asking if there are, if there are indices i1, i2 to ik, su such that um, a i1 plus a i2 plus plus a i k is equal to t. But again, uh, we're just asking if there is a subset of the AIs which sums to t. For example, uh, let's consider this tuple here. Uh, is this tuple in subset sum? And can you find the subset of these numbers which sums to 25? And the answer is yes, because the 2 plus 14 plus 9 is equal to 25. Let's consider another example. Uh, is this tuple here in subset sum? Can you find the subset of these numbers here which sums to 15? And the answer is no. There is no such such subset. Uh, you can verify that. The conjecture is that the subset sum um, cannot be solved efficiently. And again, people don't know how to show that. So instead, we're going to prove this theorem that uh, subset sum being solvable efficiently implies that the three sat is also solvable efficiently. The proof of line is that we are going to exhibit an algorithm R that on input a formula phi computes numbers a1, a2, dot, dot an, and a target t such that uh, um, phi is in uh, uh, three sat if and only if you can find the subset of these numbers here, which sums to t. If and only if the tuple a1, a2, dot, dot, a n, and t is in subset sum, okay? And r should also run in polynomial time. So again, r uh, translates three sub question to subset sum questions. If you give me, if you give r a formula phi as input, r is going to um, compute a list of numbers a i's and a target t, such that you can find the subset of the i's which sums to t if and only if the formula is satisfiable. And this is one of my favorite reductions uh, um, because uh, it shows uh, uh, how subset sum is really a combinatorial problem. Uh, at first sight, it seems something like about adding numbers, but in fact, it's about satisfiability. So the definition of R is somewhat involved. So let's do a warm up for it. Okay. Again, the input to R is going to be a formula phi. And let's say that phi has V variables and K clauses. So R is going to, is going to produce a list of numbers. These numbers will have many digits. The number of digits will be V plus K. Okay. And I'm going to look like this. Okay, so some very long numbers with many digits. The first V digits, the most significant one, okay, they're going to correspond to variables. We will see in a second how. And the other K digits, the ones here, will correspond to clauses. Okay, let us see the definition of R and then we go to an example. So R is given as input the formula phi, which has a V variables and K clauses. And we do this. For each variable X, we are going to include uh, two numbers. Okay? There is a number AX true. This is one number, which has uh, one in the digit corresponding to X and one in every digit of a clause where X appears without negation. Okay? And AX false is a similar thing, has one in X 
digit and one in every digit of a clause where x appears negated. Okay? These are the numbers which are build, uh, built based on the variables. And then there are uh, some uh, technical uh, um, uh, issues because of which uh, um, for each clause C, I'm also going to include twice two copies of the number AC, which has one in the digit corresponding to C and zero in the others. Okay, this specifies the numbers. This, uh, these are all the A's and I need to uh, specify the target T. Okay, the target T will have one in the first V digits and three in the other K digits. Okay, so I use the number three here. Okay, let's see an example. Here is a formula. Okay, this formula has three variables and three clauses. So my numbers will have six digits. Okay, so for example, the first number here, AX true is this number here, 100101. Okay, so the first three digits correspond to the variables X, Y, Z. The other three digits correspond to the closest, one, two, three. So let's see AX true, okay? So AX true has a, a one corresponding to the digits X and zero in the other digits, okay? And then has a one in every digit where X appears without negation, okay? So X appears here without negation in the first clause, so I have a one here. X does not appear here without negation, so I have a zero here. X appears here without negation, so I have a one, okay? AX false again as a one in the uh, column corresponding to X, in the digit corresponding to X, and zero for Y and Z, and has a one where X appears with a negation, which is only close to, so I have a one here, okay? The same thing for the other uh, variable, so A, y true has a one corresponding to the digit for y, zero in the other digits, and has a one where y appears unnegated, which is the close one and the close three. Okay, and so on for all of these numbers. So these numbers here correspond to variables. And then you have these technical numbers uh, which correspond to closes. So for the clause one, AC one, I just put a number which has one in clause one digit and zero everywhere else. And I put two copies of that number. And for AC two, uh, you put a number which is a one in the uh, digit corresponding to the clause two and zero everywhere else. And you put again two copies of that number um, and so on. And finally, the target T has a one in every digit corresponding to a variable and three in the digits corresponding to clauses. Okay. So why does this work? Okay, let us see the claim that uh, uh, phi is satisfiable if and only if the output of R um, is in subset sum, okay? And we're, we're gonna have to do uh, two directions. So let's do the forward direction first. Let's suppose that phi has a satisfying assignment, okay? We need to, we need to say which numbers we pick, okay? So for every uh, variable X, if the variable X is true, then we are going to pick the number AX true. And if the variable X is false, then we're going to pick the number AX false. Now, what happens if you sum these numbers? Well, we claim that you're going to get a one in the first V digits. Why? Because uh, the numbers AX true and AX false have a one in the digit corresponding to X and zero in the others. And we also claim that you're going to get uh, um, in the last K digits, the ones that correspond to closes, you're going to get either one, two or three. Okay, and why is that? That's because each close has a true literal, okay? 
So, and by definition of the numbers, AX true has a one in the clauses where X appears not negated and AX, AX false has a one in the clauses where X appears negated. So, um, for each clause, um, you will have a one in its uh, digit, at least a one in its digit, um, because you're picking the numbers corresponding to an, to an assignment. And also, you will not get more than three because you have a three CNF. So each clause only has three literals, so you're summing at most three things. Okay, so we're almost done, but we have to uh, get all the way to T. Okay, so we have to uh, explain how you get the sum exactly to T. So remember that the T has a three in every digit corresponding to a clause, okay? And here is where we use the additional, uh, the technical uh, numbers corresponding to clauses, okay? So if you pick an appropriate subset of the um, numbers AC, which corresponding to clauses, you can get the sum to be exactly T. Let us see how you argue in the other direction, okay? Now, we don't have an assignment to start with. We have a, a, a subset sum, okay? We have a subset that sums to our target value, which is T, which looks like this, remember. Okay? The first observation that we make is that when you perform the sum of these numbers, we don't, you don't have any carry, the digits, um, the digits behave independently, okay? And that's because you only have uh, three literals per clause, so, so the digits behave independently. Okay, and now um, we also note that in our uh, subset, uh, for each pair of numbers AX true and AX false, uh, exactly one is included. Why is that? Well, because uh, in each digit, um, in each variable digit, we have to get to one, right? So this one here is obtained by summing things. Uh, so you must sum a one somewhere and you cannot sum uh, two ones because otherwise you will get to two there, okay? Otherwise you will not get one in the, the digit corresponding to X, okay? This gives us some structure about the um, subset. We know that for each pair AX true and AXF, exactly one is included. We can use this now to define a satisfying assignment. We're going to define, this is a creative step. We're going to define X to be true if AX true is included in our subset and false otherwise. This is a, a definition, uh, it's a valid definition. We just have to show that this uh, um, choice satisfies the formula, okay? And to show that, uh, we observe that for every clause C, the numbers AC can contribute at most two, in the digit of C, but you have to get to three, three. So each clause must have a true literal which comes from these numbers okay otherwise you will not get to three in that digit okay let us go back to our example here is the example from before and here is a satisfying assignment uh, x is zero y is one and z is uh, zero um, so x is zero so we're going to pick this number here ax false y is one, so we pick a y true, and z is zero, so we pick a zero false, okay? These are the three numbers, okay? If you sum these numbers, then what do you get? So in the first digit, we get a one, because I have a one here and zero everywhere else. In the second digit, I get a one here, so a one overall. The third digit, again, I get a one, because I have this one here and zero everywhere else. So I have one, 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 this is good. And what happens uh, uh, the other ones? So let's, let, so let's look at the first clause. Um, this number here gives me a one, okay? I need to get to three, so I'm gonna pick two of these numbers here. And I get to three. In the second clause, I have a one from uh, um, this, ax false. 
So I choose twice this and I get to three. And in the third clause, um, you have a one from here and a one from here. Okay, so the sum of the numbers corresponding to variables is two. So I just said to pick uh, um, uh, one copy of the AC3 to get to three. And this is not the only possible assignment. Here is a different assignment in which all the variables are true. Now it's a valid assignment. Uh, in this case here, you will pick AX true, AY true and AZ true. Okay. And again, the sum will get to T and you will need to choose uh, twice then the number AC2. because in this column you have one here and only a one, you have to get to three, so you need to twice this one here. Okay, it remains to argue that R runs in polynomial time, okay? And we have to compute these numbers. And so how do we compute the numbers? Well, for each variable X in the formula, we have to examine all the clauses, okay? So overall, uh, um, we, we examine all the clauses for each variable, that's at most uh, V times K, which is at most quadratic in the input length. And to compute the numbers AC, you have to examine all the clauses. So in total, you, you get something which is a, a order of quadratic of the input length, which is a polynomial in the input length. And this concludes the beautiful proof that the subset sum in P implies 3 sat in P. Okay, this proof is not easy, um, but it's beautiful. And uh, it shows that uh, um, subset sum is really a problem about satisfiability. It's a combinatorial uh, problem. And it also explains um, I mean, it also uh, shows that the problem uh, becomes uh, difficult for very uh, large numbers. In fact, the problem um, is easy if the numbers are small.